Hey everybody, today is April 24th and today I'll take you on our third tour of our 2019 spring planting here in zone 9b. We have a ton of blooms opening up. I don't know if you can see our queen's wreath behind us, but it is just amazing. I'm going to show you some closer pictures here in a moment, but we have blooms everywhere, um, fruit everywhere, and I hope you guys enjoy. So here are our two queen's wreaths and we have tons of flowers on them. If you guys have been following along this season, we had just a tiny amount of flowers on our last video. And look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. This is attract bumblebees, hummingbirds, butterflies, all kinds of different varieties of bees. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there are bees right now working up there. But look at how pretty that is. I really wish all of you could see this in person. Maybe one day I'll have a real garden tour in the future when the kids are older. Um, but that would be super fun to have everybody out. And if any of you guys are local, I'd be happy to show you guys, do a little personal tour or come out here and kind of see what we do. Um, so I had to be way too close to me and I had to stop the video because I don't think you guys want to hear me scream. Um, these are our zinnias. Look at how beautiful those are. These were grown from seed that I saved from our last zinnias. And they are well worth the wait. They take a while to bloom from seed. But I don't believe you can go into any store and buy a zinnia plant. Because um, I've looked. And if you guys have seen them, let me know. I certainly like growing from seed, but golly, look at how beautiful that is. They're already throwing those side shoots I told you guys about. Look at that, the stages of the zinnia. They're just fun to watch. And you can actually cut these and bring them in the house, which I have not done yet, but I will soon. Um, we recently had a big Easter hunt gathering here, and um, it was really fun to kind of show everybody the garden and for the kids to come back here and kind of see what's going on. We harvested some carrots and the Easter bunny came and took some for um, for our personal Easter egg hunt with our children. So that was really fun. Um, here are our snow peas. Actually, I have snow peas and sugar snap peas mixed in here because I started both of them and realized that I mixed them up because my littlest one likes to play with the little garden tags. So when I went to plant them, they all looked the same, but now I have them kind of mixed in here. I have snow peas and sugar snap peas. No big deal. Um, Cause we love, I mean, they look beautiful together, but they have grown ridiculously big. So big that they've toppled over this and I'm harvesting them every day. Here's a, a snow pea and here's a sugar snap pea. My husband and I will just eat these with ranch. My daughter, my kids will just come out here and eat them straight from the plant. Here's our strawberry. Our rose plant has opened up recently. Kohlrabi is doing okay. Um, I honestly don't know if I'm going to leave all this kohlrabi in here. I thought it was a good time to plant, um, but it just looks like little critters. Bugs are getting onto the leaves. And it's really bugging me. So we might be changing this out. I might take this from this garden and put it in our front yard garden, which I will do a tour at some point on, but it's just not ready yet completely to show you guys what we're doing out there. It's really a mess. Um, here's our celery and our onions. Our onions are <laughs> growing ridiculous. We've got our beets here. Here's that cherry tomato that I picked up right before our last video. My daughter loves to come out here. She thinks these are balls that she can play with. So she'll just pick them and play with them and throw them in the garden. Um, but that's doing really good. Everything here is doing good. I've added some mint and some more um, lavender. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this. This is actually an onion that I cured. I don't know if I showed you guys this in the last video. I laid out to cure because I had a, too many of them and I needed to remove some. For our spring planting and it started to flower and I've never seen this before. Can you see that? Look at how pretty that is. There you go. 
I have one actually in my kitchen and it's just been blooming, sitting there blooming and it's just so beautiful. So, I so our herbs are still doing well. I certainly need to water them. Um, but I do want to point out our super cute garden markers that were gifted to me. Here's another one with mint. And I've got some other ones here that I actually just don't have in the garden. Like parsley and thyme. But I think I'm just going to buy some thyme and parsley because these are just too cute to not use. Um, but these were given to me from a store called Grateful Hearts and they are located in Sebring where I actually am. And they've got a really cute store with all kinds of uh, boutique items and gifts and they also do all kinds of painting classes and a bunch of fun stuff. So if you haven't been there and you're in the area, you certainly should go and check them out. So that is our side garden here. I'm going to take you guys over here. I'm not sure if this was done in our last video, but I've taken all of my mulberry clippings. I'm saving this one for a friend, which I've given a lot of these away. Put that over here. Taken our clippings and have repotted them into bigger pots. So this is the start of a little nursery. And um, I'm going to put these somewhere where they're going to be in sun, kind of trim the bottom leaves off, and see if we can grow these into decent sized trees to sell. So this is kind of a little project I've been working on, and I'm going to start doing this with other plants as well that we basically have in the garden. For instance, this ligustrum branch. <laughs> My daughter was playing in the tree. I don't know why, but she broke a branch. So instead of me throwing it away, I'm going to start clipping these and making more legustum trees. So um, if there's any of you guys that watch and want any clippings from our orchard um, or our trees, I'd be happy to ship them to you. If you guys pay shipping costs, I'm sure it only costs a couple dollars to ship them. But if you're in the area, I know it's only probably a couple days to get to you. Um, and then you can propagate them yourself. So I am starting can't ever get away from starting seeds. Um, I did start some butternut squash for our front orchard. I've got some papaya trees, um, some peppers for summer started. I'm actually going to start some okra today for a second planting of okra. So over here is the kids little fairy garden area. I've got some sunflowers here that are growing really well. I gotta show you guys these onions. <laughs> this is first on the agenda for me because they're just crazy. Look at that. Look at that onion. It's it's funny when I bring people out here to the garden that I've really never seen how vegetables grow. They'll be like, what? Onions grow like that? They grow in the ground. And I enjoy getting the you know, the response and the reaction of people that are coming out here that have never seen a garden. Um, even kids are like, carrots grow out of the ground. And um, it's just really fun to watch um, everyone's reactions when they come into a garden. And hopefully somewhere along the line, I'll inspire you to start your garden if you haven't already. Um, you do not need a big space like I have out here or property. There's lots of ways you can grow um, on a patio or if you're in an apartment, simple things like pots. I'm growing tomatoes here that look really sad, but I'm growing some in pots just to show you that they'll do just as good in a pot as they do in the ground, like here. These are the same plants that I started from seeds, and they're doing just fine in pots. So I'm going to try to do more plants for you guys in pots just to show you. Um, there's Right now, I think Aldi has some cute containers for like 12 bucks, 10 and $12, um, like a tower garden you can start on your patio. Um, you can grow pretty much any of this on your patio um, at a smaller uh, rate. You certainly don't want to go too crazy. So we do have some tomatoes here that are starting. I'm starting to get little cherry tomatoes on these. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. Some more tomatoes. 
And these are starting right here. These are gonna be our little pear cherry tomatoes. Here's our green beans. We have already harvested a ton of these. I actually need to get out here today and harvest some more before they get too big. If you wait too long to harvest your beans or just like any other bean, the beans get really hard and dry and they don't taste really good. So these have done really well for us. I'm actually thinking about growing more green beans, doing a second planting, um, just because they're so good and they're so easy to grow. Here is uh, some more cherry tomatoes. I'm trying to find one with some cherries on cherry tomatoes on it. Oh, there we go. Can y'all see that? It's little cherry tomatoes. Here are some more snow peas and sugar snap peas mixed together again. <laughs> um, the, we're just harvesting so many of these, but they've been so fun to grow because they are beautiful to watch grow. They have these beautiful flowers. So you can actually grow a lot of this for looks and then harvest food from it. A lot of things like snow peas and beans throw off these beautiful flowers. Um, squash and zucchini have tons of flowers. You can actually eat some of the squash flowers if you want to, and zucchini flowers. I forgot to show you guys some of my squash. Here is a mini squash. Yesterday, my um, youngest, 16 month old, grabbed one of these off the plant and I was like, no! <laughs> and she ate it at least. I've got little ones. I really think I need to kind of block this off because I do enjoy loving her running through the garden and eating food, but only when I want to and when I can be right by her side and tell her what she can and can pull and eat. Um, I have yet to do anything with these collards. I haven't dusted them. I haven't really done anything except I did spray some neem oil on them recently along with some neem oil on my um, squash and zucchini and my tomatoes because those are more bug disease prone than really anything else in our garden during the spring um, and so far I haven't seen any bug problems except for all my leafy greens. I think I might give up unless some of you can tell me that this dust for sure works in the summer time. I just don't want to waste my time too much on these greens. Oh look at that thing. What is that thing? Oh, Some kind of moth or something. Here's some more onions. I did pull a lot up and use for some creamy onion soup, some more zinnias. Um, if you guys decide to grow zinnias and you haven't grown them before, just let them be. De definitely cut some fresh flowers off of them, but when they die, they actually reseed very well. It's actually become kind of a nuisance recently because if you can see right there, right there, my daughters like to pick, yep, there. <laughs> I try to transplant these. But what happens is a few of them will die and they just kind of fall off or the girls will pick them and the seeds will fall on the ground randomly all over the place. So you can actually just kind of let these die back for the season and they will reseed their stuffs, just like a lot of flowers will. Like some flowers will do that. Um, our sunflowers are doing really good. Usually this area grows our biggest ones. These are mammoth sunflowers. Um, and I have recently offered our sunflower seeds for sale. Um, you can see how to purchase those in the link. Um, we have started a sunflower patch in our front yard for seed production and just something really fun for uh, our family to enjoy. I've never been in a sunflower patch um, and I think it's going to be super fun to take our family and show our friends and maybe one day show the community how awesome it is to sit under these 10 to 12 foot tall sunflowers. They are just so amazing and I really wanted to kind of put that close to the road so our neighbors could enjoy and we have started that. So that's a really fun project that we're starting on. And over here is our okra. Yesterday I had my first flower, oh right here, our first okra flower open up. And again, here's something else that's really beautiful. 
an ornamental that you can grow in pots that grow really good in our zone during the spring and the summer. We probably eat more okra than anything in the garden. Um, it's real easy to pickle and uh, store. It's also great fried and in soups. And um, here's our banana pepper tree. I have since found more banana pepper trees. Um, the Bonnie Organics is really has done really well for me. Um, it's really hard to find, but I recently found some. It was a very slim selection at Lowe's. And I've got, there's pretty much small plants right here. Here's our smaller plant. Then I also picked up a yellow pepper. I can't remember what other peppers I, I put in, but I pretty much bought half of what they had because I knew they were super hard to find. Now, I am not been really successful with our cucumbers. I wasn't successful our first time and it doesn't look like I'm gonna be very successful the second time. So I don't know guys, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> I built this beautiful trellis for these cucumbers and they're just not doing well. I have a few plants that are doing okay. I've got a little pickle right there. Um, the flowers are pretty but that um, looks like I'm killing more than half of them. So if you have any suggestions on this, let me know. I have a feeling I'm going to pull these up and plant more green beans here. Do a second planting of green beans. Um, actually, third planting. And then take these to the front yard garden. More kohlrabi here. And our... Let's see here. Our eggplant. Whoa, I haven't checked out this guy in a while. It's doing really well. These are shoot off beautiful flowers right here. Another ornamental plant that you can easily grow. I have more sunflowers here. Um, our purple cabbage, which I started late last fall from seed. Still looks all right. It's pretty rough, but I think what's going to happen here is I'm going to pull up most of these and replace them with peppers. So here is our little bed frame trellis with our snow peas on them. And we have a ton of snow peas. Look at how beautiful that is. So most of our family will just pick them and eat them straight off the plant. We don't have to worry about any chemicals or anything because we don't spray our plants with anything. Um, we usually come out in the morning after the dew has hit them and, and harvest because it's not so hot um, or in the evening. Um, my middle child, June, she is like a snow pea connoisseur, but she'll actually take the peas out of the pod and just eat the peas. And they actually taste like candy. So if you guys have never grown um, snow peas, they're so much better than the store. Usually the stores will sell them to you like this. Like with nothing in it. Because trust me, I've bought several packs and they're terrible <laughs> compared to fresh snow peas. My daughter will not even eat them. So I almost forgot to show you guys our blueberry bushes. They are doing so well this season. Just look at them. Look at how beautiful these are. This bush just has a ton of them and we've already harvested a ton. Look at that. Our kids love to come home from school and get a plastic bowl and run to the garden and see who can harvest the most and the biggest at the end of the day. So a lot of our kids, I'm going to pick this one, are finding them quarter size. Like it's crazy. Size of a quarter. And um, that's been super fun. We have about 40 bushes out here. And the goal was to try to have enough bushes <laughs> to feed the birds and us because they certainly, the birds really love uh, the blueberries. Oh, and the squirrels too. I have a squirrel in this tree that, a couple squirrels actually, that have been coming and, and snagging them from us. But um, this variety is called emerald and they produce twice a year and we've been really, really happy with them. Um, we got them at our local nursery called Robin's Nursery. And I believe they have two different varieties. This one's been pretty good for us. So I hope I covered everything in the garden. 
If you guys have any questions or there's something I did not cover, please make sure to ask in the comments. So I hope everyone enjoyed my tour today. If you'd like to follow along, please be sure to subscribe and don't forget to like this video. Thank you guys for watching.